Unfortunately, all of our plans were hit by this war tragedy. Uh, it might potentially lead to a third world war. Is it even safe going to Netherlands at the moment? Okay. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, then hi, my name is Alicia. And if you've seen my previous videos, then thank you for sticking around. I know I have been MIA for a while now. I haven't posted videos in a few weeks. I apologize. But before starting a YouTube career, I didn't expect it to be this hectic. It literally drains all of your creative juices. So I needed a break for a while. And also because I'm in Pakistan, I had to spend some time with my family. So finally, I got to spare some time and decided to make a video for you guys. So without further ado, let's dive right into the video. Okay, so this is not what I usually talk about in my videos. This is a very different topic. It's not every day that Russia attacks Ukraine. The, everybody knows there's a looming impending war on the world at the moment and people are actually saying that, I hope not, God forbid, but uh, it might potentially lead to a third world war. And it's a very saddening news. I've seen videos and pictures all over on social media about all the brutality and everything that's been happening in Ukraine. My heart goes out to the Ukrainian people. This is a sad time for them and for us as well because they are getting affected by it directly. But this is such a huge war that it indirectly affects the entire world. No matter how you want to perceive it, it is still impacting you and me somehow. Russia is a big country and it has a lot of ties all over the world. A lot of countries, especially the European Union, is actually very majorly dependent on oil import from Russia. And because of that fact, it is also impacting the European Union. By European Union, I'm going to specifically talk about Netherlands because that's where I spend my time and that's where I live. It makes no sense moving forward if I do not explain you a little bit of a background of the situations. So in a nutshell, the situation was that Russia actually wanted to be a part of NATO. So NATO is basically an alliance of many different countries in the world. So in case one country is in danger or is facing potential war or something, then all the countries who are actually in the alliance would provide military aid or whatever they possibly can to help that country. So Russia also showed interest and asked NATO to make Russia a part of NATO. And NATO absolutely declined Russia's this request. On the other hand, when Ukraine showed interest in becoming a part of NATO, NATO kind of gave them a positive response which actually in return offended Russia. So to scare everyone off or for whatever reason, she actually initiated the war on Ukraine. And at the moment, Ukraine is not a part of NATO. Since it was in the talks and now Ukraine actually expects help from NATO and NATO is kind of helping them, but is not directly sending military aid because Ukraine is not a part of NATO. So this is the whole situation. Okay, so we've covered the background. The second point on the list is actually price hikes and inflation in the European Union because of this war. Since Russia is the biggest exporter of fuel, which is basically crude oil and gas, Russia being closest to them made the most sense because they were importing it from Russia, but because of the war going on and the European Union decided to side with the Ukraine and they put sanctions on Russia that they're not going to import anything from Russia. But we all know that at some point it's going to become inevitable because countries all over Europe at one point eventually are going to run out of their fuel reservoirs. They are going to need to import oil from somewhere. Although in the Netherlands the situation isn't that bad, thank God it's stable at the moment and I hope it continues to be that way. The biggest issue because of this war that Netherlands is facing at the moment is price hikes in its fuel. And my friends are moving their houses in Netherlands and they told me how hard it is for them at the moment to find themselves a good uh, contract for the gas supply in their house. And the few contracts that are available are actually very expensive, they're like 400 euros per month. The price of the euro dropped 4% compared to the US dollar. And once the prices start dropping, it's like everything in the country starts becoming more expensive. So the third point on the list after all of this talk takes me to the refugee issue. So there are many refugees going into Finland because that is closest to Ukraine. And then the second most population of refugees is actually going to Hungary because these are the two countries that share a border with Ukraine. And if the situation keeps going like this, we're going to have an intense issue of refugee spillage all over Europe. 
So imagine countries all over Europe are already starting to have the issues with their fuel and energy problems. Then on top of that, they have to deal with refugees because out of humanity, someone needs to take care of them, right? Okay, so the next one on the list is travel. I have mentioned this so many times before in my videos that summers is basically the time to travel Europe. People were just recovering from COVID. Everybody was making plans to travel. Where does everyone mostly make plans to go when they plan to travel? Europe. But again, unfortunately, all of our plans were hit by this war tragedy. The airfares are impossibly high. And if that wasn't the only problem, there are security issues. People are scared for their lives. All over social media and the TV, the only news we're hearing is that there's a potential that if Vladimir actually manages to take over Ukraine, it's going to expand its forces towards European Union and it's making people scared for their lives. So at this crucial time, people are actually canceling their travel plans. And I'm in Pakistan at my parents' house. Everywhere on TV or everywhere we hear and see is that this war might expand and God forbid, but it might turn into a third world war. And since it's closer to Europe, my parents are actually scared for me. And they're like, are you sure you want to go? Is it even safe going to Netherlands at the moment? And my husband's there and I was talking to him the other day and I was like, okay, what's the situation here? The news are like really bad. So give me some update. And he was like, no, thankfully the situation's calm. We're facing some price hikes. But other than that, it's pretty safe. So at the moment, I do plan to go back. Everyone who's in a different continent actually thinks that Europe is a dangerous place to be in at the moment. Okay, now that we've talked about some background and the basic details about the war, let's talk about how this war is actually affecting Netherlands directly. Netherlands is actually the sixth biggest importer of things from Russia. 85% of its imports are actually crude oil or refined oil. So since European Union has unanimously put sanctions on Russia and have stopped all of their trade with Russia, import or export, this means that Netherlands needs to come up with a substitute for its oil and fuel consumption. Another way that Netherlands is getting affected by this war is because of its largest port in Europe the port in Rotterdam. So around 62 million tons of cargo is actually handled at that port. So 15% of overall of that cargo is related to Russia. It's either imports or exports coming in all over Europe or going from Europe into Russia. Because of all the sanctions on Russia, we're going to have 15% less of that cargo, which means there's going to be less profits or taxes that we were making off of things on that port. So it's going to impact the economy in Netherlands also. So at the moment, the economy in Netherlands is pretty stable. But if the situation keeps worsening like it is at the moment, it's going to be a problem. We're going to have an economic crisis at our hands. And if all of that wasn't problem enough, like Germany, Netherlands might eventually start feeling the need to increase their military budget as well, which is also going to impact their economy. Thank God we're a little further away from the war, but wars are like wildfires. They can spread overnight. I would just pray to God that the situation comes to an end. Ukraine becomes a peaceful country again. Russia actually comes to its senses and pulls back its troops. Because no matter what, the oppressors eventually have to face consequences to their actions. So Netherlands has a better chance at surviving the brunt of this war. Producing their own food and energy are like two biggest things that are playing in the favor for Netherlands at the moment. I hope this continues to happen. So with all of these things playing in the favor of Netherlands, there's a good chance that Netherlands will make it out of this dark tunnel with the least damage to its economy. Anyways, guys, so this was it for this video. I know this is a very intense topic than what I usually talk about in my videos and on my channel here because my channel is all about positivity. But this was something that I had to talk about. If there have been people who don't know what has been going on or why this war started, I hope they got a little bit of insight about the situation and uh, some, of their, some of your questions have been answered. All of this was just my research, what me and probably you guys have been hearing and listening all over on social media and, and your television screens. So I just felt like I needed to come up here and talk about it because it's something that has been directly impacting me because it's my family and friends who were telling me to not go back to Netherlands because it's just not safe at the moment, you know? I just had to talk about it and spread awareness and wars are such ugly things. And although we are sitting in the leisure of our home, we do not understand the magnitude of the situation that the Ukrainians and Syrians and, and Palestinians and Kashmiris are going through at the moment. We should just remember them in our prayers because that is the least we can do for them.
anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did then don't forget to give it a big thumbs up please guys i need a thousand subscribers that is only possible if you guys subscribe because 90 percent of my viewers are not actually subscribed to my channel so please guys just press that button down there you know just just one click please do it i will see you guys next time in my video until then bye bye